Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 states, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Hello, and welcome to the program. This is From Sickness to Health. I'm your host, Rico Hill, and this is the blue guy, Sickness himself. And today, whoa, we have a fascinating program for you, don't we? Yeah, I guess so. You all right? I'm a little disappointed. In me, the program, the, the topic, what? No, my heart. It attacked me last night, out of nowhere, after all I've done for it. You mean you had a heart attack? No, I did not have a heart attack. My heart attacked me. Let me get this straight. Your heart attacked you. Yeah, can you believe it? I mean, No, I can't believe it. Well, there I was, sitting on the couch, Enjoying some, some delicious high-fat ice cream with corn smoke. Anyway, out of nowhere, this sharp pain in my chest like a knife. How would you like it if someone put a knife in your chest? Well, I probably wouldn't like it, but that's not the point. The point is, is that your heart is just responding to all the unhealthy foods you've been eating. Unhealthy foods? I'm insulted. Name some. Let's see, fried bacon, fried chicken, fried fish, cupcakes, fried ice cream, pizza, cheese pizza, meat lover's pizza, uh, what else? No, 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 no. Rico, this isn't helping. Name some unhealthy foods. Anyway, that's probably why your heart attacked you. Yeah, that's right, my heart attacked me. Make the record straight, my heart attacked me. Ungrateful heart. So you're mad at your heart? Yes, I'm mad at my heart. I have taken care of this thing. Oh. Are you mad at your mouth too? Maybe you should be mad at your hands for putting the food in your mouth. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need a time to laugh at that joke. This is not funny. Okay, roll the program. Look, today's topic is when hearts attack. <laughs> Hello, heart attack hotline? Yes, I'd like to report a vicious attack. Roll it. Yeah, yeah, I can wait. Well, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio of From Sickness to Health. Oh, I cannot tell you how excited I am about today's program. I'm joined by my good friend, Dr. Schubert Palmer, who is the chairman of the cardiology section of the White Memorial uh, Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. He's also the director of catheterization laboratory and the director of cardiac rehabilitation so he's very busy but he made time today to come and be with us so we thank you for being here dr palmer delighted to be here oh it's exciting isn't it anytime you're talking about the heart i am excited exactly because you know dr palmer this is a subject that he has committed his entire life to this is his life's work and he is committed to making people healthy mentally physically and spiritually and there are a lot of misconceptions aren't there about this subject about what keeps us ticking what slows us down or even stopping altogether but our friend sickness thinks that he has this whole heart thing figured out so let's take a look and see what he has to say thank you Rico hey did you know that cardiac arrest and heart attacks are the leading cause of death in the United States this year mm, that's one in four people that's gonna die of cardiac arrest Wow big business Take this guy, for example. I mean, look at him. Fatty foods, lack of exercise, sugary drinks, watching TV all day, late night eating. He's just 35 years old. But little does he know that age is nothing but a number. Boy, he has no idea what's gonna hit him. Hey, buddy, want me to order another meaty extra cheese pizza? I'm paying. Hey, you are. All right. 
He thinks I'm paying, but in the long run, he'll be the one paying. <laughs> Back to you, Rico. Wow. Well, I tell you what, I don't know if he has it figured out or if he's causing a problem, but today we're talking about, as sickness put it, his heart attacked him. And many people have this misconception that somehow a heart attack is like your heart attacking you. But we're going to kind of show in this program today that oftentimes we're attacking our heart, aren't we? We sure certainly are. Okay. Well, and, and the thing that's so exciting about today's program, Dr. Palmer, is that you brought some props for us. So let's start with the basics. Let's start at your heart. Heart's the size of a fist, basically. And you remember, uh, this is going to be pumping by the time you are 70 years of age, it will have beat at least uh, two billion times. Wow. If you look very closely, you will notice that there are these big arteries, we call the aorta and they're the pulmonary artery. And, um, and on the outside, you have these little the bitsy things, that's the, the coronary arteries. The red ones are the arteries, the blue is the veins. We were concerned about the arteries. And you have three main arteries. You have one that's on the, uh, on the left side that comes down the front, the other one that circles to the back, and they, they actually start out together. And if you get a blockage in that area, you call that a widow maker. And then you have the artery on the right side that's called the right coronary artery. So whenever an artery gets clogged up with cholesterol or then fats, then all of the muscle that's depending on that blood supply doesn't have it. And so you have a heart attack. Inside the heart, if you look inside, those are the muscles, and they're beating their hearts off, no pun intended. <laughs> but they can only work as the circulation is good to them. Ah. They can't get the blood directly. Now, alligators, they're different. They have sinusoids, and they, the, they get the blood directly, but we're not alligators. <laughs> we need to get the blood from these coronary arteries. And if they stay open, perfect circulation gives you perfect health. Perfect health. Wow, that is a beautiful demonstration. So we've seen here clearly how the heart functions, and that's how we want it to function. And if we don't have it uh, functioning at its capacity, we're going to have some problems, aren't we? We are, and unfortunately, we are suffering a big epidemic. If you were to take, again, this coronary artery and blow it up to a big size, and I have a little model here. Like, here's an example of what the coronary arteries are supposed to be, nice and clean. What we are finding out now from autopsies from the young people who have died in the wars, you know, the different wars we've had, is that their arteries, even at a young age, 15, 16 to 20, they've started the process of plaque buildup, that little yellow there, and it gets worse and worse. And what's happening now is this buildup of plaque or blockages, we are seeing at an age where we, you'd have to be 70 years of age. Now we're seeing that disease process in 20-year-olds, so the arteries are landed up looking like this. Whoa. In fact, that's get, almost closed. It is. And 40-year-old folk, they're running around an average of maybe in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 percent blockages, and they don't even know it. And it's gotten so bad that in the young people, now this is kind of scary, but uh, a friend of mine who works for the, uh, the public school system, they're having young people, boys in their 16, 17, 18 year old boys, and the number one drug that they're asking the health prescribers to give them is medicines like Viagra. Viagra, so there is a problem with circulation, isn't there? It is scary because 16-year-old boys should never have problems with circulation. There are some serious moral and ethical issues involved. But when you consider besides those issues, why a 16-year-old boy would even be asking for anything like that, this is the problem. The, the diet that we as parents have given our children uh, now is leading to a society in which parents are burying their children. Oh, how sad. How sad. You know what? There is a, there's a video clip that we're going to take a look at that illustrates this point. Let's turn to that and come back and continue to talk about that. 
Well, the first sign which both of these cast members uh, had was shortness of breath. And you might not think that's a big deal. Most folks look for chest pain. But it turns out that about half the people who have a heart attack never knew it was coming. They never realized that subtle signs were been out there because they were looking for the wrong signs. Shortness of breath, the inability to walk up two flights of stairs, or a sudden change in how breathless you get during normal activities, that's, a, that's an issue that really worries me. It's subtle, but it's there, and it's a big warning sign to everybody out there. Uh, if you look like Mr. Gandolfini, that's a warning sign as well. That big waist that we have talked about together, Pierre, several times. A waist size mm -hmm. that is more than half your height is a warning sign because that increased girth predisposes you to the risk factors of heart disease, which are high blood pressure, number one cause of death, uh, a risk factor for it, uh, diabetes, and high cholesterol. And if you don't know uh, whether you have a shortness of breath or not, and you're not going to pay attention to your waist size, at least know those risk factors because they're critical. And now the fourth sign I'm going to tell you all is not something many would think of, but it was probably important uh, in, in Mr. Gandolfini's case, which is what you last ate, because often your last meal is truly the last meal. Heart disease is a serious issue. It's affecting so many Americans. And just before we took a look at the video here, you were pointing out that it's affecting young people, young mm -hmm. boys mm -hmm. at an early age due to what? The lifestyle and particularly the diet is the most important. There are other issues that come in to play the exercise for most people are on their uh, playing video games and things of that sort that they're not exercising. Yeah. So exercise is very important and maybe we'll talk about it in a little while, but relatively speaking, the major problem is the diet. So as a heart surgeon, you are finding that the diet is contributing to heart disease and cardiac arrest. Everyone who has looked at this subject seriously, down from the Surgeon General to uh, William Castelli from the Framingham study and several of, all of the researchers, same conclusion. 70 to 80% or more of the heart problems we're having mm -hmm. would cease to exist if folks were having a reasonable diet. So what's an unreasonable diet? And what happens? What is this? You've got some props here. That's very exciting to me. You've got some glob here. What is this thing here? Well, this here is five pounds of fat. Ooh. <laughs> my, my. It, this is so heavy. You mean to tell me if someone has five pounds of fat in their body, it's as heavy as this? How does someone get this in their body? Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> This all comes from what comes through here, okay? Whoa. The food we eat, coupled with the exercise we do not have, mm -hmm. directly leads to this little issue here. As we look at uh, the obesity trends in America, we have found some very interesting things. The, the map has just gradually lit up in terms of the percentage of overweight and obese the population, mm -hmm. so much so that the average seat that we sit on now is 22 inches wide. It used to be 100 years ago, 17 inches. So it went from 17 inches to 22. To make accommodation for or increasing girth. So people are getting bigger. It is. And um, the most serious trend is that children, the obesity uh, rates in children are off the, off the scale. Wow, wow. So, so when we look at fat, let's, let's make this real practical for people. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I was sharing with someone the other day, and I said, you know, you have to be careful of processed foods. And, and the person said, I don't even eat processed foods. And then I shared what a few processed foods were, and she ate all of them. <laughs> so sometimes people don't know what we're talking about. We say fatty food. They'll say, well, I don't eat any fatty foods. Let's get some examples uh, here of how we go from this, which goes in the mouth, to this. Take a look here. This is, um, this is the amount of fat that you'll see in one cup of skim milk. A skim milk. Skim milk. This is in one cup of whole milk. This is almost full. Uh-huh. Now, skim milk tastes pretty nasty, I must confess, yes. personally. Yes. Um, I would much rather this. 
But there's even a better way, and that is, uh, as we talk about fats, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> All uh, right. And this is pretty much bad fat. Okay. Here is another example. This is three ounces of uh, a three-ounce fish serving. And then here we have, this is three-ounce uh, chicken roasted, no skin. That's halfway full. Halfway full. And that's the, uh, the best part of the chicken. So and this is the yeah. best part of the chicken, yeah. but, but this you know, the is not... The breast without the skin. Without the skin. But this isn't going to affect my heart, is it? Huh. It definitely does. Oh. It gets even better. This is a regular potato chips. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is completely full mm -hmm. of fat, and you're saying this is 12 to 20 chips, one ounce? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But people mm -hmm. love their potato chips. They sit on the couch, they watch the game, and they eat bowls and bowls of them, and they dip them in something that also <laughs> has fat. Well, as I, as I tell my, my patients, you enjoy the, the, you know, this kind of food? I said, you know, it, it is, it's bad for you, but it's good for me. As a heart surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go with, um, this is um, the small size of French fries. That's the amount of fat in a small serving of French fries. Hold up. Hold up. This, this is mind-blowing to me. This is a small serving of French fries. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about like when they are extra super sized in some way. Mm -hmm. This is the smallest version. Smallest version. And it fills up a complete a test tube right there. You know, the te but but I, I want to make sure that we understand this because, you know, someone said, well, that's a small test tube of fat. How, how could this be a bad thing? But you're saying it is. It is because that has to go somewhere. And as you study the circulations, we find out that they land up in the process. Of course, it goes to the liver and then from there on, but it lands up many times in these arteries, the cholesterol the, um, and the fats land up somewhere. So when you're going in as a, as a surgeon and you're looking, now most people are, have never looked inside of a heart. You do mm -hmm. it every day all day, all the time, yes? Uh -huh. we do. And what you're seeing is the stuff that we don't think is actually going anywhere except into our stomach is ending up in our hearts and is causing major, major problems. You are what you eat. Garbage in, garbage out. Mercy. Quality in, quality out. Take a look at this one. This is for one hot dog. W what kind of a hot dog? A dead dog. <laughs> 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 a dead dog, hot dog. Okay. And, and here's my favorite. Here's this my one's, favorite. This one's coming out the thing. It's, it's, it's coming. Yeah. Well, how about the quarter pound cheeseburger? A quarter pounder of cheeseburger. Here is the, the fat in a quarter pound cheeseburger. I'm going to need your help. Help me there. Okay. And that, and that, and that. Uh, I'm sorry. You, you mean one of these? That's All only, three. This is three. Quarter, quarter pounds of cheese. One serving. One this is one pound. serving. A quarter pound cheeseburger. You know what? I'm going to hold these right here. Let's, because there are a lot of people on the street. There are a lot of people on the street who are actually eating this, and they don't know what we're talking about. So let's go hear from them and come back and finish the discussion. Let's take a listen. All right, now this whole epidemic of attacks of the heart around the country is taking place. What do you think is causing these heart attacks? Well, people are under a lot of stress. Well, it's definitely not the food, right? Because there's some health nuts out there trying to convince people it's the food. Well, in combination with the stress. Oh, well, what kind of food are we going to throw under the bus with stress that causes these heart pork. attacks? Pork is number one. Pork? pork? Yeah. Why would you do this to me? I thought we were friends. I thought we were too. I mean, it's your friends shirt differ. with the blue. Friends, friends differ, differ in yes. many instances. Some yes. friends do differ. What do you think causes heart attacks? Stress, high blood pressure. Why, why put all the guilt on stress and high blood pressure? Obesity? Oh, man, you're starting to sound like my friend Rico. What do you think is causing these heart attacks? Fatty foods, um, I say lack of exercise, something I learned recently. Oh, um, you exercise? Other things. 
And it, outside of work, you know. Yeah, don't waste your time. Ride my bike casually, man. Maybe yeah. about four or five times a month. Just run your fingers across the desk. That's about all the exercise I encourage people to get. You do? Oh, yeah, man. Don't exercise. Yeah, you're sickness. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm sickness. I'm already super famous out here in Hollywood. Oh. You know, if you take aspirin, you get on it every day. There's, there's subscription every day. models. They'll send I it in from other people. it's good for your heart. Oh, yeah, it's good yeah. for your heart. Aspirin is So fantastic. I won't get a heart attack, because I'm I'm within that demographic of people who get those. So. Heart attack? Yeah. You act like she's acting like she doesn't like heart attacks. People my age are tipping over every day. Like, what? What? Isn't that great? You've heard them, Rico. They don't want heart attacks, but they love them their fried food. Finger licking, mouth watering, artery clogging fried food. Steak, chicken, french fries. People are eating everything, but they don't have a clue that they're really setting themselves up to visit someone like you, aren't they? No, they don't. And what are the uh, numbers? What are the numbers like on this? Every 30 seconds in this country, somebody dies from a cardiovascular disease. That works out to a person dying f uh, from heart attacks, um, high blood pressure related symptoms, and so on. So every 30 seconds. A uh, heart attack works out to every minute. Every minute somebody is dropping dead from a heart attack. 40, up to 40% of folks um, that get this heart attack are dead within an hour. And for at least half of them, their very first symptom of having heart trouble is sudden death. So, it, it, so, so the symptom itself is, is death. death. You're done. It's kind of late. It's a little late right. in the game for that, isn't it? Yes. And uh, they looked at some of these folks who had sudden death, and they found out that uh, between um, one study, between 30 to between 20 and 40 percent of them had seen a doctor the previous week and had been declared that they were in good health. Oh, that's criminal. It's not the fault of the doctor. It's not. It's the nature of the disease, atherosclerosis. Ah. So it's actually a crime against yourself that is perpetrated even before you've gotten to the doctor. It is definitely not, absolutely. And so what's happening now is that you have this disease, and some can call it the silent killer, that we invite to our home for dinner every day. And silently, it does its job. These arteries keep getting clogged more and more with cholesterol. And most of the heart attacks we have are not even the arteries that are 90 percent closed. There are the ones that are maybe 50-ish percent, but they have a, uh, an unstable plaque that ruptures. Okay, so you've got something here that once you've started that, that huge thing of fat that we had here, and you, mm -hmm. you've got that in the body, mm -hmm. and you're eating the foods that contribute to this, mm -hmm. and someone has a heart attack. Now, I know this very well because my mother actually had triple bypass heart mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. And for many years, you know, she and others feel that it's, it's a radical thing to change the diet to a more plant-based diet and yes. eating uh -huh. fatty foods, fried foods. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's really radical to actually have a bypass surgery or this thing that you're about to demonstrate. Yeah. Running out of time, so I really want to see this. <laughs> okay, so yes, here it goes. So you've done all of this. Now, you could have had a heart attack and, and tried to do everything right. It is possible, okay. but the odds are much, much in your favor if you're even trying to do the right thing. Right. So, uh, you've, and again, too, the main enemy that we're looking at is, not, is cholesterol. Cholesterol is like public enemy number one. So okay. if your food has cholesterol, you have to be very careful. So you- A salad has cholesterol? The only the foods, my friend Hans Deal said it correctly, the only foods that have cholesterol are foods that have a mother or a face. Flesh foods. Egg, flesh, Chicken, animal foods. fish, uh -huh. beef, pork. Yes. And many people don't even recognize that foods like chicken have as much cholesterol as beef. So it has less fat, but it has the same amount of cholesterol. So you come into my office, and now, not office, you come into the emergency room okay. and you're having a sudden heart attack. So we rush you to the cath lab. We have to do this right away. And, uh, you know, so I'm rushed to the cath lab. We get inside your artery. We do a procedure we call an angioplasty. And I have here a catheter. Now I'm going to need your help here, doctor. Okay. Here I'm taking out the angiogram. Um, here we have a picture of what a stent looks like. Ah, look at that. And so we have to get this stent positioned right across the blocked artery, wherever that is. 
And once we get it into position, then we go ahead and inflate, and let's see what happens. Just push that forward. Pushing really hard. You have to go harder. No, forward. Keep pushing hard, hard. hard. Uh, oh. There, and keep holding it down. Oh, let's okay. See. Let's try it again. All right. Pull and as back. We're, yeah, and as we're doing this, uh, we have a very limited time to open up that blocked artery. I don't want to kill anybody. Let's go. get this done. Here we go. Keep, Ready? Yes. Keep going. Keep, keep holding it. Keep holding it down. Keep holding it down. Keep holding it down. And you can see that there's a stent there that's trying to squeeze itself open. Ah, look at that. See the, and if we, uh, he's, he's working very hard over here. All this work to try to keep somebody alive for eating wrong? <laughs> Mercy. And that stent will open up and act as a scaffold to keep the artery open. So now you need artificial help to keep the artery open to keep you alive. Well, you do what you have to do. But as soon as I'm finished with this, I, I get off my mask and everything. I go to the head of the table and I'll tell the patient I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is the artery is open. We have restored circulation. No more of your heart muscle is going to die than already has passed, died. And uh, there's, there's, there's hope. That's the good news. The bad news is I haven't cured anything. The artery, the atherosclerosis is still a problem, and you are going to need to make a drastic change. And then I say, the best surgical equipment is not what I do, but I brought along the very best surgical equipment. Not the knife, but it has to do with this. If you can use this, this is my surgical equipment that I recommend. <laughs> and if you know how to operate in your kitchen, I will not have to operate on you in mine. Well said. Did you hear that? It comes down to two instruments of surgery. <laughs> what you have and I have and everyone has, and we use it every day, a fork and a knife. It really comes down to choice, doesn't it? It's all a matter of choice. It's a matter of choice. Well, continue to tune in to our program where we share with you the things that you can do to live a heart-healthy life, and you don't have to go under the knife. I would prefer this knife over your knife any day. Until next time, we thank you so much, doctor, for being with us and sharing this information. Tune in again on From Sickness to Health. Isn't it great to come to the knowledge of the truth, a problem so huge with a solution so simple? To think that making some changes here and there can actually prevent heart attacks and even reversing heart disease. I don't know about you, but this does my heart good. It does your heart good. Oh yes, to think that this program and what we share today may change somebody's life or even save a life. Well, it gives me heartburn. Heartburn. Healthy folk and all this healthy eating talk gives me heart palpitations. And you know what? I do not think for one moment that people are gonna listen to you or this program. Well, you sound a little angry, but anyway, you know, I'm reminded of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, that says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Friends, we ought to care for our bodies, what we put in them and what we do with them. Cardiac arrest is a very serious matter affecting the lives of millions of Americans and their families. With simple lifestyle changes, we can reverse this, live a longer, happier, more fulfilling life. Well, that's our program for today, but I wanna leave you with this. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. I'm Rico Hill, your host. And I'm Blue Guy Sickness. Be healthy. Maranatha. Mmm, pizza. Don't try and act like those vegetables taste good. Look, get out. Get out, I'm trying to be healthy, all right? Get out. Oh no, they've gotten to you. Get out, oh, man. No, we're BFFs, late night eating buddies. Oh, this get is out. terrible. Get out, and take that pizza with you. Go. My friend became a leaf eater. I gotta eat vegetables. It tastes good. <laughs>